Lee, and I'm going to ask you how we evaluate theories of consciousness, and I want to give you some background why I'm asking you, because I got obsessed with a, after a <laughs> lifetime of uh, interest in consciousness with cataloging as many of the theories that I thought passed some standard of rationality uh, um, into, into, into a, a, a substantial review paper uh, in which I gathered all the theories, explained them, and then put them into some kind of taxonomy. But I specifically said, I'm not going to evaluate any of them. I'm going to treat them all at the same level. Now, obviously, that's not the case. Some I would think more logical than others. But, but because I, I didn't want to take even a, a, a baby step into evaluation, because that's such a different way of approaching consciousness. And you've really focused on evaluation, which I admire greatly, uh, both uh, with uh, the adversarial collaborations, the contrast database. Uh, tell me about each of those big science ideas to evaluate theories of consciousness. So the adversarial collaboration, I remember the day where I got the email from the Witt Potgitter from uh, the TWCF um, Foundation, where he invited me to this uh, meeting in, Christ in the, at the Allen Institute, it was led by Christoph Koch, um, to think about new experiments uh, in the field of consciousness. And I didn't understand what's going to happen, but when I walked into this meeting and saw some of the people, you know, the thinkers that I've read and been inspired by sitting together, you know, over the same table and trying to think about ways where the theories contrast. And it wasn't easy. It was, it was these were two days who were for me exciting to the degree that I can't even try to convey because intellectually it was, there was a feeling of, A, I felt um, like good faith that they are willing to put their theories on the table and try to understand exactly how to test them, and B, um, scientific rigor. So the idea was to come up with tests that would be good enough. Um, it was clear that it's going to be a very challenging task, and history will judge how good work we, we've done. But the intellectual uh, exercise of comparing the theories and extracting their predictions and pushing them to give us more precise predictions, because I think that one of the key problems in our field is that the theories, most of them, if not all of them are underdeveloped. Yeah. We still don't have, like in, in, in an ideal world, we didn't need to ask the proponents of the theories for predictions. We would just read the papers mm -hmm. and extract the predictions ourselves. But in many cases, the predictions are either not there for some questions or there but not specific enough. And I think that what's been going on in the field for the recent, for the, you know, next, the, the last uh, few years is that we are pushing the theories to be better, to be more precise, and to give us the tools to evaluate them. It doesn't have to be through adversarial collaboration. Each one of us can do an experiment in their own lab. But the more precise the theories get, the better will be our mm. attempts to evaluate them. And you mentioned the contrast database. This is also something that we tried to do there. So what we did there was to gather all experiments that we could find that interpreted their findings in light of four theories of consciousness. Um, and uh, what Itai Aron did there, he's the PhD student who led this project, is to uh, provide a bird's eye view of the field. And what we found is that the theories have been evaluated under different conditions. And in order for, the, for us to, I think, develop better evaluations, we need to level the field. We need to come up with tests that would be as stringent and as relevant to several theories. What, what Itai found, by the way, is that only, I think, 7% of the studies tried to test more than one theory in one uh, experiment. Uh. And that only a third of them were designed a priori in order to test predictions of a theory. So I think we need more designed, pre-designed experiments that would do that, hopefully uh, contrasting more than one theory. And I, what I would, uh, by the way, encourage you and maybe our viewers to do is to go into the contrast database. It's now open. There's a website. You can conduct your own queries. You can try to evaluate the theories and see how they've been tested. And maybe this could inspire others to come up with more experiments that would test the theories.
How do you deal with the question that you, the contrast database deals with four theories? They're very prominent neurobiological, but, but it, it, it has a, a philosophical limitation right. in terms of the constraint. Right, that was a big decision that we've made. We didn't know then that there are over 200 theories <laughs> that you exposed. I didn't either until I looked at it. <laughs> but even if we would try to do with, with 10, it would be just too big of a work. Yeah. Uh, this project itself was really a Herculean effort from Itai's uh, side. So what we decided to do was, you know, if you open the um, Stanford uh, Encyclopedia of Philosophy, these are the four theories right. that you find. If you go to a review paper written by Hakuan Lau and David Rosenthal representing higher order thought, these are the four theories that are presented there. If you go to the Mashur et al. paper, review for uh, the global neural workspace, again, you find these four theories. So we said, these are the theories that have been most widely discussed in the literature. They're not necessarily the most accurate ones, even not the most uh, widely studied ones. We were surprised to see how little experimental yeah. effort has been devoted to higher order thought which is very prominent in the discussions, but apparently not tested as much. So we went with those four theories, but the good news is now the website is open. Each one can, if each one of the users can suggest a new theory to add, right. can upload your own paper. So hopefully by making this a community-based tool rather than, you know, there is a limit to what, to what one student can do. But now if we have the entire community working on this together, then we can have many more uh, uh, theories and we'll be very happy for that to happen. How do you deal in terms of valuation with theories uh, that are still physicalists in a way, but outside the neurobiological uh, mainstream? And, and I'm particularly thinking about the uh, set of uh, quantum uh, theories where quantum, the, the principles of quantum physics are fundamental to the theory of consciousness, because quantum physics is in everything we do, of course, yeah. but, but there are a whole set of theories. I had 15 or so different right. theories that that take uh, a, a, a quantum physics as literally the locus of consciousness. Right. So I am ashamed to say that I've never tried for these specific theories, probably because it's a huge challenge. And you know, working on consciousness is already a big challenge. Yeah. So it might have been just a decision uh, based on um, feasibility. But people from those theories have tried. So Stuart Hameroff can present you with evidence that he thinks supports support the theory and even tests. It is interesting to note that the attempt to form an adversarial collaboration with this theory actually failed. So they weren't able to come up with an experiment. I think it was against IIT, although I might be misremembering. Um, but I do think that these theories, like all others, deserve a chance, deserve a test. And I'm sure that the community would yield such tests also for quantum theories.